How would I know if my twin flame is communicating with me telepathically, even if it's subconsciously? Can I communicate with them telepathically, et cetera, et cetera? The short answer is maybe, right? Yeah, sort of. The thing is, we need to have two discussions first to really understand if that is happening, how would I know? And if it is even possible, and how would I tell, right? We need to have two discussions. The first one is, what is telepathy? The second one is, what are twin flames? So really the only way to answer this question is scientifically. And you're in the right place. <laughs> My name is Kurt. I am the world's leading twin flame coach. I've coached well over 5,500 students. That's a lot of unions, guys, and I've got a lot of data about how this works, and I approach this scientifically. There's no such thing as magic. Magic is just science undiscovered. So in other words, there is some mechanism at work here. Telepathy, intuition, twin flames, how do those things function? And when we have a conversation about how those two things function, we can determine A, if it is possible, and B, how would I tell if my twin flame is communicating with me or if I can communicate with them? And I think you're gonna like the answer. So let's get right into it. So first, let's talk about telepathy. And then we'll talk about twin flames and then we'll answer some of these questions. So telepathy, really easy to understand. Okay, everybody knows that you are physical body, mind, soul. So for you to understand telepathy, we need to talk about these three components. Now, the physical body, we're pretty clear about what that is. The mind. The mind is part mind, yes. It's part mental, yes. But there's more to it than that. I think a better word or term would be astral body or metaphysical body. It's the metaphysical component of the three-part triune being, body, mind, soul, right? So the astral body, the mind, thoughts, concepts, emotions, I feel good, I feel bad. And that one is a little tricky for some people. Some people make the mistake of confusing the soul with emotions. And we even have like a style of music uh, that I believe uh, came from the United States called soul. And um, it's, 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 it's really powerful. It's like real, like you listen to soul music and it like really sucks you in. And you're like, oh, this is so deep. It's gotta be my soul. Well, not so fast. We'll get to the soul in a second because the soul is not emotional. But some people, again, they kind of make that mistake. Like this was a really powerful emotion though, Kurt. So it must have been my soul. Yeah, no. The soul is just consciousness. And we'll get to that in a minute. So just to be clear, um, the mind is emotion. The mind is where feelings come from, a really good feeling or a really bad feeling. The mind is duality, okay? So like thoughts, concepts, that was the first part of the astral body that I mentioned. Concepts, I like it, I don't like it. It's good, it's bad. It's here, it's there. It's up, it's down. It's hot, it's cold, past, future, uh, positive, negative, right? Duality. And by the way, ancient Zen masters have always referred to the mind as duality. And I've even heard psychologists refer to it that way because that's how it works. Interesting thing. Physical reality works pretty much the exact same way. They just have a different word for it. Albert Einstein coined the term relativity, but it's the exact same thing. Even an atom right? Positive proton, negative electron, and then you even have a neutral neutron. Mm, isn't that interesting? So it's, there's a sliding scale with something on either end of it, light and dark, right? This is what the yin and yang symbol represents. Yin, yang, duality, 
right? Light and dark, alpha, omega, past, future. I feel good, I feel bad. So that's the astral body. And it also includes chakras, all things metaphysical, right? Body, mind, soul. So this is the mind, the astral body. It's mental, it's emotional concepts, right? Telepathy, mm, that's where telepathy is coming from. So think about your third eye. Your third eye, your, your mental chakra, mm, it's metaphysical. It's like a big radio transmitter receiver. And you can see thoughts. And a thought can be a sound, like a song that's playing in your head, or a, somebody's voice, or a, 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 a vision, a, a, a sight, right? A, an old memory of a person. And there can even be emotional memories that go along with that that are connected to your other chakras, but they all kind of have different frequencies, if you will, the chakras. So like your heart chakra, your solar plexus, they're gonna be more of the emotional part of the radio dial, of the astral body, of the metaphysical plane, P-L-A-N-E, metaphysical plane, emotions, thoughts, right? You follow me? These are all metaphysical, and <clears throat> we'll just use your third eye. We'll just kind of keep it simple and use your third eye because pretty much everybody's clear about thoughts, like what that is. Like, I don't have to explain it to you, right? So your third eye chakra can pick up visions, things that you see, or sounds, right, more or less. Um, now, those thoughts... They can come from outside or they can come from your own mind. And let's be honest, 98%, if not more, like almost all of the thoughts that your third eye chakra is looking at are your own thoughts. They're coming from your own energy cloud. So there's this energy cloud, which is like a fourth component, right? And the energy cloud, it's called a personality, ego, it's an identity entity, right? It's a bunch of retained thought and emotional patterns. And you start off not really having that. Like your personality ego, um, it starts to really coagulate by the time you're like seven, eight, even a psychologist is gonna tell you. Yeah, it's like seven, eight years old. That's when you kinda, we can see what this person's personality is going to be like. And it's a bunch of retained thought and emotional patterns, memories. It's an identity. This is who I am. This is how I act, right? This is the kind of person I am. And I'm not saying that's good or bad. That's just what it is. So you're accessing memories, perhaps, or even like perceived notions about things that could happen. You know how the mind kind of makes things up and it makes up stories and you know, this kind of thing. And that's usually what you're looking at. Like almost always, any thoughts that your third eye is looking at or any emotions that your other chakras could be experiencing are coming from your own energy cloud, your own personality ego, right? And it's worth noting that during the ordinary course of conversation about these things, um we can use the words ego, mind, or personality interchangeably. But I'm trying to be clear in this video to explain the science of this. So necessarily, I'm going to point out that the, that the word mind is the actual infrastructure of the mind. But the ego personality is the fourth kind of that energy cloud, the retained thought and emotional patterns. And by the way, that's kind of what people are seeing, people who can see auras. That's what they're looking at, okay? It's also connected to like body memory. So there's a connection to body memory too. I won't go too deeply into that in this video for the sake of time, but there is kind of a correlation there. Um, so that's your third eye chakra. Now, telepathy 
is when your third eye chakra is picking up on external thoughts or perhaps like accessing the Akashic record. You see a vision of the future or something, right? Um, and there's other kinds of like sensations and things that you could feel. Um, I've experienced where uh, you feel like somebody else's presence there with you kind of thing. I'm not so sure that that is um, telepathic though. I can't tell. I think that might be more intuitive, which would explain a lot, um, but it could be telepathic. The thing is, guys, your mind, it'll play tricks on you. And there's times when people report feeling the presence of their twin flame with them. And I've had that too. And then I've had like soulmates, like, and you know, watch my video. Um, which one was it? Uh, uh, was it the Twin Flame Mission? Twin Flame, which one was it? Twin Flame Myths, maybe? Or, I don't know. <laughs> one, of the, one of the recent videos that I've done, um, let me think, hold on. It's the, the False Twin Flames video. And by the way, if you want to find like an easy place to find my other Twin Flame coaching videos, they're free, guys. I'm the world's number one Twin Flame coach. If you're new here, they're worth checking out. Go watch my free coaching videos. Uh, I even put like a greatest hits playlist together. Um, if you go onto my YouTube channel, go to the playlist menu at the top. You'll see playlists. Go there and look for the playlist called... How to get your twin flame. How to get your twin flame. That's like my greatest hits. Uh, and they're all free, guys. Go check them out. I think you're going to find I'm a lot different than all the other kind of twin flame teachings that you've probably come across on the internet. Um, and I'm not saying that to toot my own horn. I just, I know I'm different. Um, maybe there's a reason why I'm so effective as a coach. Go check them out, guys. They're free. Go check them out. Um, now, the video uh, about false twin flames on that playlist where I explain your there's your twin flame and then there's everybody else. So what I'm getting at is I've experienced this with both my twin flame and other people too, where I felt like their presence there with me. And I don't... I don't know what to say about that one, guys. Although, what's dangerous, if that's the right word, um, with that is some people, they the, the addictive, the energy with your twin flame is so addictive because they are your soul. That's what we're going to talk about in a second. Your twin flame is your soul in another body. Um, what's dangerous about that is you have that kind of an experience, like you feel their presence, and then that makes you want to focus on the person even harder, which is why they're running, by the way. That's one of the things that we're going to talk about in a second. So I don't know. I don't know uh, what to think about that one. If that does happen to you, cool. Just kind of let it go. Um, because again, if you focus on the person, that's why they're running. That's why they're rejecting you, right? And we're going to talk about that in a second. So that's the mind, guys. And it does take a, a few minutes to explain that component. Body, mind, soul, right? So the mind, it's kind of that whole ball of wax. Chakras, all the chakras, telepathy, thoughts, metaphysical energy, emotions, and how all the... It's like an engine. It's got all these different parts, you know, the mind. It can be very sophisticated. Um, but that is, that's telepathy. Your third eye chakra, for example... Just to keep things simple, it's usually it's looking at your thoughts. But when you are seeing thoughts from an outside source, so from another person or from the Akashic Records, from the universe, you're seeing like a future event or something like that, that's telepathy. It's just people usually don't do that. People usually are so enamored with their own cloud of ego, their own personality, their own thoughts, their own programs, their own trips, their own mind chatter that they don't even notice like all the possibilities where you can tap into um, these other telepathic channels. 
that your third eye chakra is perfectly capable of picking up on. Now, uh, many of you watching, maybe you have had telepathic experiences. I have, and I've had lots of them, um, where they just kind of come and go, and you're like, whoa, I know that was a thought or a sound from somebody else's mind, right? So this is our segue into the next component, which is the soul, which is consciousness. The soul is knowing, it's experiencing, it feels, it's sense. Sense itself, it's not a sense, like your five senses, it's consciousness. So there's thoughts and feelings going on, right? And you're there and you're asking yourself, have you ever done this? Like, why did I think that thought? Why am I thinking about this? Why am I feeling this way? Right, who's asking? Who's asking? H how is it that you're able to notice, be aware of thoughts at all? What is the awareness? What is that? What is consciousness? Consciousness itself. Awareness itself. That which experiences. That which senses. What is that? It's the soul. It's the soul. So, have you ever had deja vu? Of course you have. Intuition and deja vu are... A lot alike, they can be a lot alike. They're not really exactly the same, but how they are alike is the kind of, well, the, the, the caliber of experience that you're having. Oh, let me explain. When you're having deja vu, you just have this knowing that I've done this before. How do I know I've done this before? Have I done this before? Why do I feel like I've done this before? Right. So there's two things going on. There's the knowing that you've done this before, and there's this mental narrative. How do I know I've done this before? Blah, blah, blah. How do you, are you sure? No, I haven't done this before. Have I done this before? What's, why do I know I've done this before? Blah, 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 blah. Right. And people, again, people accidentally conflate soul and mind all the time, like soul music. Having an emotional experience and labeling it soul doesn't make it soul. Well, it was a really deep one though, Kurt. Yeah, I know. It was just a strong emotion. That's not the soul. The soul is like Eckhart Tolle. <sighs> Slowing down. Stillness. Inner peace. Zen. Oneness. It's the one it's the one. It's deep. It's deeper than thought. It's isness. It's existence itself. You follow me? It's non duality. Remember, the mind is duality yin and yang, light and dark, past and future. I like it, I don't like it. I feel good, I feel bad, plus minus. That's how the whole entire universe works, right? But the soul, the soul is, well, it comes from the source. It's non-duality. It's a singularity. That's the word they use in physics, by the way. That's where the Big Bang came from. Hmm. So the whole entire universe came from a singularity, right? Non-duality, the monad, the great I am. And there's kind of these two concepts in, in physics and in spirituality. You've got the one, and then you've got the duality. Both of those disciplines, science and spiritualism, they're, they kind of rest on a foundation of knowing the difference between those two things. The monad, the one, the singularity, the non-duality, and the yin and yang, the opposites, the duality, the relativity, right? The alpha and the omega, those two things, the one and the two. The one, the single, and the duality. The soul is the one. 
It's the non-duality. And you can go on the internet or YouTube and look for non-duality teachings. You could type that in and you're going to find all kinds of spiritual teachers talking about non-duality all day. It's the consciousness. It's the soul. That's the knowing. That's the intuition. So when you're experiencing deja vu, you're like, how do I know this? Are you? Are you the one who is saying, how do I know I've done this before? Are you the narrative teller? Are you your mind? What is consciousness? So I'm coming back to that now. What is awareness? What is that? The only answer that makes sense is, I guess that's me. Consciousness, right, it's the self and you experience it. The mind is actually external to you. We as humans are just accustomed to believing that we are our mind. We are this personality. Right, back to that again. We're a collection of memories, thoughts, tastes, likes and dislikes, beliefs, habits of thought, habits of feeling, the personality, the ego. We believe we are that. So when you, in quotation marks, are there asking yourself, how do I know this is true? How can it be that I've done this before? Why do I feel like I've done this before? Blah, 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 blah. The blah, 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 the mental narrative, it's not really you. It's the mind. And this is the staple of ancient Zen spiritualism, of transcendentalism. Transcending the mind, remembering that you are consciousness, by the way, that's how you get your twin flame to unblock you. I'm just saying. Remember, the one thing that everybody on the internet gets correct about twin flames is that it's one soul in two bodies. Or it's like the soul splits. Or you're the same soul vibration. Or something like that, right? And there's a lot of really bad information on the internet about twin flames. Most of it is. <laughs> and I'm not criticizing. I know everybody's just trying to figure out like what the hell is going on, right? Because this is a really weird journey and there's the obsessive thinking and all this weird stuff is happening to you. So I get it. I'm not criticizing. But it's the internet. <laughs> you know, people can say whatever they want. But thank goodness, the one thing everybody does get correct about Twin Flames is it's one soul and two bodies. So, intuition, knowing, it's a lot like deja vu. So if you've experienced deja vu, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's just that with deja vu, it's information about the present. Like, I know I've done this before. And again, the mind is what says, I know I've done this before. How can I know that? But the knowing is the soul. The soul transcends time, guys. The soul is on a higher plane beyond time. And the soul is telling you, yeah, you have done this before. Right. Now, that's deja vu. But intuition, it's exactly the same, except for the information is different. The intuitive information, the knowing, it's information that you experience. And with the, in the case of intuition, it's information about somebody else or maybe a future event. Whereas deja vu is a specific kind of information. And it doesn't even have to be called deja vu, right? It's just with deja vu, you know you've done this before. And the soul is probably just telling you, yeah, you're in the right place. You're doing things right. You're where you need to be because you have done this before, right? The soul is beyond time. Of course you've done this before. But intuition is... It feels the same, it's just different information. It's information about the future or about another person, like, I don't know, your twin flame. So, one of the things we talked about is that weird, like, feeling their presence with you. I'm not convinced that's intuitive. I think it's telepathic. It's just your other chakras. But I don't know, guys. I, I'm just being honest with you. I'm not really sure. I've collected a lot of data from my students. Now, telepathy, like actually seeing what your twin flame is doing, 
I don't think that is possible, and I'll tell you why. Also, I've never seen any smoking gun evidence, but intuition with your twin flame, it is absolutely possible. And I've experienced it too. Now, let's talk about twin flames, and we'll start putting this all together. So this diagram is a diagram. You've probably seen me explain this before on my channel. If you go watch my other videos, you're going to see me use this diagram a lot. This is something you'll see other spiritual teachers talking about when they're explaining reincarnation, past lives, right? So this is the oversoul in heaven, the afterlife, which is really the before life, right? It's just a higher plane. There's no such thing as time. So the Oversoul is experiencing all of these incarnations at the same time. Your higher self, the Oversoul in heaven. Isn't that something? This is your past life in the year 1750. This is your past life in the year uh, 1870. And here's you and your twin flame. So again, it's like the soul splits or it's multiple incarnations, right? I refer to uh, my twin flame as my other self. And I teach my students to do that too. It's simultaneous incarnations. Now, what's interesting is there's this polarization at the level of the mind with your twin flame. You go watch my video called What Are Twin Flames? On my How to Get Your Twin Flames playlist. It's the second video. Go check it out. And I give you kind of an in-depth explanation about this polarization. Why? Why would there be a polarization at the level of the mind with your twin flame? Because the mind is polarization. It's duality. Plus, minus, yin, yang, alpha, omega. That's why your twin flame runs. If you focus on your twin flame, mentally, emotionally, or metaphysically, they run. You focus on them, they focus on anything but you. Yin, yang. You focus on them, they focus on anything but you. You push, they pull away. That's why if you're doing the mirror exercise or sending them healing energy or you're doing any like I'm going to balance my inner feminine and masculine. I'm going to fix my inner child for the, for the express purpose of getting my twin flame to come back, of getting them to unblock me, to talk to me, to be in union with them. I'm doing, you're doing anything at all to get your twin flame to come back, they run. The only thing you can do is go in here, guys. You have to go beyond the duality of the mind. You have to transcend the mind. That's why all of my students, basically, I instruct them on ancient Zen spiritual practices. Detoxing from the twin flame and embrace your ascension. And actually, what's interesting is when you start that detoxi detoxification process from your twin flame, it's it's like the ascension it just starts happen it just starts to happen automatically it's like you don't even have to do anything it's awesome and then yeah your twin flame like they start blowing up your phone all of a sudden it's weird it's awesome <laughs> right because the mind is pushing them away you're pushing they're going to pull at the level of the mind right the law of attraction does work with your twin flame but if you're in that energy of polarization of there's me and there's other who is separate, you're going to get separation. That's why they call the ego separation consciousness. That's where that word came from, by the way. It came from that. Separation. It came from ancient Zen traditions, not twin flames. And neither did union for that matter. When you transcend the separation consciousness of ego, they call that unity consciousness. Union. And one of the things that you're doing while you're doing that is detaching from the physical world. Detaching. Yeah, now you know where those words came from. Guys, the twin flame journey is really just the true spiritual journey. That's all this ever was. Now, because the energy from you pushes onto them and makes them pull away, can you receive a telepathic message from them? In theory, no. And to this day, I have yet to have one single solitary person give me verifiable outside third-party evidence. Third party. You can do your little drive-by comments in the comments section below if you want. Kurt, you're wrong. I got a telepathic message from my twin flame. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, fine. 
What I need is an email or a text message from them or some information from a third party person to confirm, to verify that your twin flame was doing or saying exactly what you saw them doing or saying in your third eye chakra. Give me third party proof. Show me the evidence. You need to have empirical data. Prove to me that your twin flame was indeed doing or saying what you saw them doing or saying in your mind's eye with third party evidence, an email, a text message, right? Nobody's been able to provide it. And by the way, if that does happen, they're probably not your twin flame. I'm just saying. Um, the next logical step, of course, would be if you were to detox from the addictive energy with the person and start going within and transcending, if they come back, then you're confirming that they're your twin flame. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing is I need that third party evidence. Nobody's been able to do those two things, guys. There's zero evidence to this day that anybody has ever experienced metaphysical telepathy from their twin flame. Now, theoretically, you could beam a telepathic message to them. But they're going to run if you do that. <laughs> right? It's the yin-yang. It's the push-pull, guys. Now, what you can do is experience that knowing, that intuition. Remember, I said it's, it's like in kind to deja vu. It kind of feels the same as deja vu. It's just different information. Like, I know they're going to come back or I know they're my twin flame. But, guys, go watch my twin flame test video, right? Go do the twin flame test and bring me third-party verification and I'll send you a trophy. There's not a single one. And I'm actually really kind of glad because all that's doing is confirming to me that this is scientific. There is an infrastructure. There is a, uh, a, a way that this does work, okay? Nobody's been able to, prefer to, to furnish proof to me that A, it is your twin flame, and B, you can communicate two ways, two ways with your twin flame. They can communicate with you and you can communicate with them. But intuition, absolutely. You can, you can get intuitive information, information from your twin flame all day long, all day long, guys. And again, that's coming from the soul. Everything about this video, are you getting the sense that you need to transcend the mind and approach this through the soul? Guys, your twin flame is your soul. The mind is polarity. It's duality, guys. You're just going to push them away. Okay? So, can you have telepathic experiences from your twin flame? No. No, not that I've seen. And it doesn't even make sense according to my theory, which has been proven. But intuition, which is better than telepathy, absolutely. Absolutely. You can do that all day long. So I hope I cleared some things up for you today. I hope this makes sense. Thank you very much for watching, you guys. I'll see you next time.